Welcome back to our session. We are already seeing about structure of cell. So there are three uh, major functional regions in the cell. So the first thing is plasma membrane and cell wall. And the second thing is nucleus. And the third thing is cytoplasm. So we have already uh, discussed about plasma membrane. Right? So today we are going to look into the nucleus. So if we take the nucleus, so this nucleus will be in the centric of the cell, you know, it is centric in position. For example, if this is a cell, it will be in centric position. So this is the nucleus, right? So basically this nucleus is oval or spherical in shape. So this nucleus will be absent in prokaryotes, right? So if it is absent in the prokaryote, in which this nucleus is going to present. So it will be present in all eukaryotes. Like example animals and plants. You know, so these are the example of the eukaryotic organisms. Okay. So there are mainly four components present in the nucleus. So there are four components. So the first thing is nuclear membrane. Where this nuclear membrane is going to present. So now I am going to draw this nucleus right so this is the nuclear membrane so i'm drawing this nucleus little bit large right so this is the nuclear membrane and then the second thing will be nucleoplasm okay so nucleoplasm will be present in the nucleus it is like a cytoplasm you know this is nucleoplasm okay fine the next thing is nucleolus be a little bit darker region inside the nucleus. So this is the nucleus. And the last thing is nuclear chromatin. So this is the nuclear chromatin. It will be thread-like structure. So this is called as the nuclear chromatin. So if you take the nucleus, it is oval or spherical in shape okay it will be absent in the prokaryotes and it is present in the eukaryotic organisms like animals and also plants okay so mainly there are four components present in the nucleus so the first thing is nuclear membrane which is the outer membrane of the nucleus and then nucleoplasm nucleolus we know where the nucleolus is present it is present here and finally, the nuclear chromatin. So, we are going to discuss these four components in detail. Fine? Yes. So, this is the structure of the nucleus. Okay. So, this is the nuclear membrane. Right. So, this is the nuclear membrane. Where it is? Yes. So, it is also called as the nuclear envelope. Fine. This nuclear envelope is made up of two layers. So, actually, it consists of two layers. It will be like this, you know two layers. I am just drawing this nuclear envelope. So this is the inner membrane and this is the outer membrane. So in between this inner and outer membrane there is a space called perinuclear space. So this whole thing is called as the nuclear envelope. Okay. So in between this nuclear envelope there will be some spaces you know you can see the spaces here. So we can see some spaces here and here is the space and here here yes right. So this space is called as the nuclear pore fine. So then this whole substance inside the nucleus is called as the nucleoplasm. So this thread like structure is present there right that is called as the chromatin. Okay, so inside the nucleus there is a dark stained substances. This is called as the nucleolus. So from the outer membrane of this nucleus, endoplasmic reticulum will be started. So this is the cell organelle. We are going to see this later. Fine. So now we are going to focus only on the nucleus. So the first component is nuclear membrane. So the first component is nuclear membrane. So, this nuclear membrane is also called as karyotheca. This nuclear membrane will be thin and it will be elastic and it is semi permeable. You know, so this will be thin, elastic, 
and semi permeable we know what is semi permeable right it is going to some allow some some of the stuff substances inside the nucleus as i've already told you it consists of two layers okay consists of two layered envelope around nucleoplasm so the whole substance which is present inside the nucleus is nucleoplasm so this two layer envelope is surrounded by the surrounding the nucleoplasm okay fine we know what is nuclear membrane we know the other name right so what is the function of this nuclear membrane so the function of the so if we take the function okay so it is going to exchange the materials exchange of materials so ma'am what is the materials is going to exchange like it is going to exchange the minerals ribosomal subunits rnas proteins so there are many things is there right so everything is going to be exchanged inside and outside the nucleus right now we are going to see what is ribosomal subunit and all so let me write so the materials like minerals ribosomal subunits i'll explain you what is meant by ribosomal subunits in the further slides okay and then proteins so these are some of the substances or materials which is going to exchange right nuclear membrane is also called as a karyotheca and we have seen the structure of the nucleus so this nuclear membrane has two layers right so this is one layer and this is another layer this is called as the inner layer okay and this is called as the outer layer so this nuclear membrane is going to uh, separate the cytoplasm and the nucleoplasm the space between this inner and outer membrane is called as the perinuclear space then so what is going to be the function of this nuclear membrane so mainly the exchange of some materials okay so this is the main function of the nuclear membrane shall we move to the next component so the next thing is nucleoplasm this nucleoplasm is also called as the nuclear sac and also it is called as the karyolem can you find where is the nucleoplasm in this diagram yes it is here right so this is the nucleoplasm so if we take the nucleoplasm the first thing is it is transparent and it will be semi fluid okay and it will be like a colloidal ground so what is meant by colloidal ground like um, something like a sticky substances you know if you take the aloe vera gel and all it will be little bit sticky you know so that is called as the colloidal okay so it has a colloidal ground okay so in which the chromatin fiber or present right so what you mean by chromatin fiber which is nothing but chromatin right so this chromatin the thread like substances it is going here and there right yeah this is the chromatin fibers right so these are present in the nucleoplasm only first thing is it is transparent and it is semi fluid and it is colloid and ground in which the chromatin fibers are present so what is going to be the function of this nucleoplasm it is a nuclear skeleton You know what do you mean by nuclear skeleton? It is going to give some definite shape to the nucleus. That is called as a skeleton. So if you take a body, what what you call as a skeleton? You know, bones. So this skeleton is giving the shape of the body. The same thing it is going to happen in the nucleus also. So this nucleoplasm is going to give shape to the nucleus. Fine. And also it is going to form spindle fiber. So spindle fiber in the sense. for example a cell is there right so for example if we take this is a cell and this is the nucleus if this cell want to replicate okay so it wants to divide into two what is going to happen first of all this this nucleus is going to get separated okay so for this separation process the spindle fiber is formed with the help of the spindle fiber only the nucleus is going to get separated and finally the two cells is going to form and the next thing is it is going to be the site you know this is going to be the place for the synthesis of site for synthesis for so dna rna and also ribosomal subunits you are uh, looking into the nucleus 
so there are four components so the first thing we have completed the nuclear membrane the second thing is nucleoplasm it is also called as the nuclear sac and also karyolim right so it is a transparent and it will be semi fluid and it will be like a colloidal like substances okay so in this only the chromatin is present so chromatin is which is nothing but thread like structure okay then if you ask what is the function of this nucleoplasm in the sense it acts as a nuclear skeleton which means it is going to give some definite shape to the nucleus fine and it will form a spindle fiber we know what a spindle fiber so this spindle fiber will be formed during the cell division it will be helping for the cell to divide okay then it is also going to be the site for synthesis of dna and also rna and ribosomal subunits what do you mean by dna deoxy ribose nucleic acid so rna in the sense ribose nucleic acids now let's move into the nucleolus can you find now where is the nucleolus yes this is the nucleolus right yes so this is the dark stained substances so this is the nucleolus if we take the nucleolus it will be dense obviously you can see that right it, it is dense and it is darkly stained so now we are speaking about nucleolus and the first thing is it is dense and darkly stained so what is going to be the function of this and again so it is going to be the site uh, for the formation and also to store the rnas you know formation and storage of rrnas so rrna in the sense ribosomal rna this ribosomal rna is going to help for the synthesis of ribosomes you know this rna helps in the synthesis of ribosomes let me tell you what is going to what is the ribosomes in the further slides right you just understand it is going to form the ribosomes so if you take this nucleolus it is a dense darkly stained thing present in the nucleus so what is the function of this nucleolus in the sense it is mainly rrna it is going to form and store the rrna so why it want to store and forms this rrna in the sense because this is going to help for the formation of ribosomes which is very 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 important okay now let's move into the fourth component that is nuclear chromatin so where is the chromatin yes here it is this is also a darkly stained network which is very long and it is a fine thread so let me draw this uh, chromatin here you no know, it should be like this so this is called as the chromatin okay so what is the function of this chromatin in the sense during cell division during the cell division this chromatin will get condensed you know it will get condensed and then it will be forming like this this is called as the chromosome so during cell division this nuclear chromatin will get condensed by dehydration and spiraling you know it will get spiraled so it is like a thread right it will be spiraled something like this and finally it will forms this structure okay to form a uh, species specific number of rods so this is called as the rods you know which is called as the chromosome this nuclear chromatin is a long thread like structure will be looking like this when the cell wants to get replicated if it want to synthesis okay this thin chromatin fibers will be condensed condensed in the sense it will be coiled like spiral you know and then finally it forms the structure like this so this is called as the chromosome so now we are going to see about chromosomes so this is the animal cell this is the nucleus of the cell okay if you can see the structure inside the nucleus so there is a thread like structure right this thread thread like structure is little bit big here so it has a rods you know so this is called as the chromosome okay so this chromosome is made up of the structure like this you know this is called as the dna yes we know the structure of the dna right 
so it will be like this dna is present in the chromosomes okay the chromosome is made up of the dna so actually this chromosome consists of two identical and spirally coiled thread you know it is like a identical right this two or identical this is called as the sister chromatids and this sister chromatids are joined at lightly strained thing right so this this area is called as the centromere so first of all if we take the nucleus it consists of the nuclear chromatin okay this nuclear chromatin will be like a thread like structure fine if it want to undergo replication this thin chromatin fibers will form a rod like structure called chromosome okay so after the end of the cell division the chromosome i mean after the synthesis right so after the synthesis it will get replicated after the replication a chromosome will consist of two sister chromatids okay which is attached in the centromere okay so mainly this chromosome is made up of only dna not only dna and also it consists of a protein called histones now this chromosome is divided into four based on the position of centromere we know what is centromere right the centromere is this right so this is the centromere now from the first picture let me name this picture okay this is a can you tell me where the centromere is present yes so the centromere is present in the center of the chromosome right so this is called as the metacentric here the chromosome is present at the center sorry centromere is present at the center so if we take the picture b where the centromere is present the centromere is present near to the center not exactly at the center it is nearer to the center this is called as the submetacentric okay so it is near to the center take the picture c where the centromere is present it is almost it is going at the end of this right it is called as acrocentric yes this is called as the acrocentric which is present at the subterminal subterminal of the chromosome fine if we take the picture d so why this centromere is present almost at the end right so this is called as the telocentric which is centromere at end so this is based on the position of the centromere okay so there are also another type based on the number of centromere so the first thing is monocentric the second thing is dicentric the third thing is polycentric you know so if this chromosome uh, contains only one centromere then it is called as the monocentric when this chromosome contains two centromere it is called as the dicentric and the chromosome contains many centromere it is called as the polycentric so basically uh, we have seen two types you know like based on the position of the centromere the chromosome is divided into four if we take the metacentric the chromo the centromere is present at the center this is the centromere right and then if we take the submetacentric the centromere is present near to the center right if we take the acrocentric it is present at the subterminal subterminal in the sense it is present near to the end one side okay then if we take the telocentric the centromere it is present in the end almost at the dead end of the chromosome right so these are the four type of chromosome based on the position of centromere so if we take the number of centromere based on the number of centromere the chromosome is divided into three that is monocentric so in the monocentric the chromosome consists of only one centromere so can you tell me the metacentric is monocentric or dicentric it is a monocentric because it consists of only one centromere fine so if this chromosome contains two centromere it is called as the dicentric okay if the chromosome contains many centromere then it is called as the polycentric so these are the types of chromosome based on the position of centromere and also the number of centromere
Now let's see the function of the nucleus. The main function of this nucleus, you know, it is going to control all the chemical activities, chemical reactions. So which is called as the metabolic activities, you know. All the metabolic activities is controlled by the nucleus. So without nucleus, the cell cannot do anything, you know. So if we remove the nucleus from the cell, the cell is going to die, right. So that much important the nucleus is for the cell. All the metabolic reactions is going to happen, is going to control by the nucleus. And also it is going to regulate cell cycle. If the cell want to undergo a division, right? So if it want to get replicated, the cell will undergo cell cycle. So cell cycle is very much important for the replication of the cell. So if the cell contains the chromatin, that is chromosome, first of all, it wants to get synthesis. Then finally, it will get separated from the one cell, two cells or formed. This is replication. Right. So, for the replication, the cell should undergo cell cycle. And the third thing is about, which is very important, it concerned with the transmission of hereditary traits, you know. So, what do you mean by hereditary traits, you know? The characteristics, which is from the, uh, from our parents, right. So, transmission of hereditary traits from the parent to offspring is by the nucleus because it contains the chromosome right the chromosome is made up of what the chromosome is made up of yes dna how we got the dna from the parent so the children will be looking like a father or the mother right how it is possible because father and mother dna is present inside the baby right which is called as the offspring so it concerned with the transmission of hereditary traits from the parent to the offspring right yes this is all about the nucleus so we have seen about the four components uh, present in the nucleus and also the function of the nucleus okay so as i've already told you it is a semi permeable because it contains a uh, uh, two layers that is inner and outer layer how it is going to be the semi permeable can you tell me how it is going to be the semi permeable because it contains the nuclear pores you know so this is the nuclear pore fine so we know this is the nuclear envelope so in between the nuclear envelope there is a pore called nuclear pore okay through this nuclear pore only the materials will be passing inside and outside the nucleus. Yes. So, this is all about the nucleus.